Okay, so we did another poll and I wanted to know what you guys wanted to cover. Compression, EQ, reverb, or delay. You guys picked compression. I think I might make this into a thing. So um, we'll probably do polls on what you guys want to hear tutorials about um, for the foreseeable future, maybe. I don't know. But compression is a good place to start. I mean, let's think about it. Whenever we first start mixing, compression is uh, basically the first thing that's kind of difficult to understand. Because we know it's necessary and we're told to put it on everything, but the actual thing it's doing besides squeezing the sound, that's a little bit harder to explain. And the result is we usually take a compressor that we like or that we like the UI design of. I mean, come on, let's be honest. We pick a preset and then we think we like it because honestly, the preset's gonna be louder. That's one thing you always have to worry about whenever you're taking these presets off of these plugins. Most of them are gonna come with a volume boost, which is inherently going to give you the illusion of better quality. And while compression presets work fine, especially for things like drums, like kick drums, and the reason they work fine for kick drums is because a kick is a kick. They're gonna vary in tone and they're gonna vary in like dynamics and, and hardness, but in general, they're all gonna occupy a very similar sonic range. Personally, I wouldn't use presets sets for vocals and I'll tell you why. Whereas a kick is generally going to occupy the exact same frequency spectrum anywhere from like 100 hertz to 200, 300 ish. A vocal can sit almost anywhere depending on the vocalist. Not only that, but depending on the vocalist, the song, the tempo, the syllables on the vocalist is going to change. That means a lot of the parameters that we're going to go over in this video are also going to change. See, in this video, we're going to go over different thresholds pun intended, of sort of varying complexity on how a compression works. But the big thing that we're going to talk about today, and the thing I think most people get the most confused about, is attack and release. Now, whenever we get to the basic understanding of what a compressor does, I find that attack and release are the least known. They're the one that people know the least about, but they're also the one that gives you the most customizability. Do you remember whenever we were talking about how different vocalists are gonna have different lengths of syllables? Attack and release are the ones that are gonna be basically in charge of controlling that. So let's go through these thresholds of understandings I'm talking about. First off, what does the compressor actually do? For that, we're gonna to go to the computer. Hello, and welcome to the computer. So I have a vocal here from Carolina Alabao. You guys probably know her from the channel already. She's on a lot of different mic demos. I will link her Instagram in the bio and also on the screen right now. So check this vocal out. Cada día vivo. Un universo lleno de ilusión. Just reverb right now. Y luego se esfuma, dejándome a oscuras. Right. So that, this is all just the regular old vocal. It's completely raw besides like what I said, just some reverb. This monstrosity that you're seeing is an audio track that I printed a completely nuked compressor into. Now, the first thing I want you to notice before we even play anything is to take a look at the shapes of the waveform. Let's, let's zoom in, say, here, okay? In the actual vocal, this is a very small waveform. In the really compressed vocal, it's a sausage. <laughs> Whenever it comes to understanding compressors, I want you to think about sausages because what it does is it takes everything loud and it takes everything quiet and it compresses them to the same volume. And the result in terms of the visual waveform is a, is a sausage. So let's listen to this one part of the vocal, you know, just the vocal uncompressed. All right, now let's hear the compressed one. Oh, hello, sentidos. Everything that was quiet and nuanced is right in your face. It takes all of the detail. It takes everything that made the vocal dynamic and it squishes it. Now, obviously this is a stupid extreme example. For example, all of the plosives, all of the S sounds, you can see it in the waveform are really spiking and they hurt a lot. Let's hear it. Prepare your ears. No quiero ser la piedra en mi propio camino y digo no. Quiero callar la voz que me encoge. So that's what a compressor does. It's a really extreme example, um, but in a not so subtle way, it's going to show you what the more subtle settings are doing. Now, the next threshold of understanding are probably the most important settings of a compressor that being the threshold and the ratio. We're gonna go into the software to understand it in just a second, but it basically just amounts to this. The ratio is the strength. The threshold is where you want 
the strength to start activating. The ratio is represented as one number colon another number. Now what that is, is basically an input and an output. What we're saying, if we have one to one ratio, is for every one decibel that we're putting in, we're getting one decibel out. So if we have a 12 to one ratio, we're essentially saying for every 12 decibels that we're getting in, we're taking 12 decibels of noise and squashing it down to one decibel. Now, threshold is basically saying at what volume do you want me to start squashing those decibels. Let's go into the computer for this one. So we're back on the regular vocal and we're using this graphic compressor. It's a really simple compressor and watch where the little dot lies on the vocal. So basically her vocal is hitting at around negative 20 dB. Now watch what happens if I drag this little bar down and spoiler alert, this little bar is the threshold. You can see right here, if I drag the threshold, same thing moves. So we found where she's peaking, which is where that little dot is lying. And then we're basically going to activate our ratio, which is currently 2.39 decibels in, one decibel out, at around negative 20 decibels. Now, if I take this threshold and I drag it way far down, we're going to get way more reduction because we're activating it way earlier. So you can think of threshold as where you want to begin targeting your compression, and you can think of ratio of how strong of a compression you want to activate. Now, in order to understand attack and release, I could show you with just a compressor, but I think it's better exhibited through a gate. Now, if you guys know what a gate is, it's basically just at a certain volume, no more volume. <laughs> I'll show you what I mean. So if I play this section of the vocal here with no plugin activated, all right, now if I activate a gate, watch what happens whenever her vocal stops playing. It's immediately cut off. Did you see that? Watch this little bar right here. Dead. Right there. The, the gate decided to completely cut... The gate decided to completely cut it off. Now you'll notice on the gate, we also have attack and we also have release. Attack and release are essentially, how quick do you want this to activate and how quickly do you want it to stop activating? Attack is when you want it to activate, release is when you want it to deactivate. It's easier to understand release, so let me show you what I mean. Let's listen to this little piece here with zero release. Listen to that last part. Sounds wrong right? Sounds like it's glitching or something. That's because we have an instant release. Basically, as soon as it's going past the threshold on this gate, it's killing it. It's immediately cutting the vocal off. Now, what happens if I set the release to like 300 milliseconds? Let's listen to it now. Sounds a little bit more natural. That's because we're essentially saying, I want you to take 300 milliseconds before you decide to completely shut the volume down. Let's take the decay of the very last note. With an instant release, once it passes the threshold, it's dead. But with a release that takes a little bit more time, you can see it on that bar there. In fact, it might be better to kind of split the, uh, the middle there. It's much more natural. So bearing that in mind, that attack and release are essentially just how naturally you want the note to decay and how naturally you want the compressor to deactivate, we then have to think how we want to use this. For example, let's go back to what I was talking about way in the beginning of the video. We were talking about syllables. This is how you customize your compressor to match the syllables and the actual way of singing and enunciating that your vocalist, or you if you're the singer, um, are producing a vocal. Let's go back to that graphic compressor and let's zoom in here. So most of her vocals, oh, I gotta set the threshold to be a little less extreme. So her vocals, if we're gonna highlight here, uh, are not lasting very long in these sections and we kind of have to figure out an average that we wanna deal with. So she's got a really enunciated vocal. 
So I'm probably gonna make the release, the way the compression is releasing, a pretty quick release. Maybe a little slower than that. And I want the attack to be really quick because she's got that really quick attack to her vocal, basically. She's enunciating very fast. It's not a it's not a gradual vocal. Alright, so with these things in mind, let's move on to a compressor that is maybe more likely to be used and is a little bit more tasteful. I don't use the C1 compressor for anything except for demoing what a compressor does. I find it to be rather clinical uh, in its sound and it doesn't really add a lot of harmonic content. It just displays what a compressor does pretty well. So bearing in mind that we know what compression does now, we know what threshold does now, we know what a ratio is, and we also know about attack and release time, let's go to a compressor that looks a little bit different. This is my favorite compressor. This is the compressor I use on everything. And I'm just gonna reset the values here. It's by Slate Digital. Uh, it's an emulation of an old hardware unit that I'm blanking on the name right now. It's really tasteful. I think it makes things sound really natural. Now the way that we control this compressor, and you're gonna find this on a lot of old rack mounted units or anything that's emulating an old rack mounted unit, they're gonna have different idiosyncrasies on how you control the ratio or the power. For example, on this one, the ratio of how much gain reduction you're doing, how much you're reducing the decibels, um, it's gonna be decided on the input level and on the threshold. For example, if I play it now, this little volume meter, it's not moving at all. We're reducing nothing. It's like this thing's not even on. In order to make it reduce, we need to push up the input level and also set the threshold. So now, if we look at the volume meter, on the quieter sections, we're averaging around one decibel of gain reduction, and when she's peaking, we're averaging about five decibels of gain reduction. Watch what happens if I take the attack and the release and I and I make them really long. Watch the meter. Did you see how slowly it went from one to zero? It's activating for a really long time because we've told it not to release for a really long time. Keep activating, keep compressing until the vocal is completely gone. I don't want that. I want the release to be a little bit faster. And I also want the attack to happen pretty quick. I might actually make the attack be a little less quick. I'm going to amp up the input level. That way we're going to put more signal into the ratio. So now what we've done basically is the really loud parts are being reduced in gain by sometimes up to like 7, 10 dB. And then the really quiet parts are, you know, only being reduced by maybe one decibel. And it's normalizing our vocal a little bit so that, you know, the loud parts aren't clipping while the quiet parts are too quiet. We can then raise up the volume level in a more uniform way and it can bring out a lot of taste and style because suddenly that breathiness is a lot more noticeable. So yeah, compression is both going to normalize the volume so you can bring it up in a more uniform manner. Peaks aren't gonna clip, quiet parts are gonna be too quiet. It can also bring out a lot of cool taste, breathiness, and smoothness to your voice. So when you learn to dial in attack and release to how you use compression, you can really customize your compressor to sound exactly the way it should on your individual vocal. This is why vocalists specifically shouldn't rely too much on presets when it comes to a compressor. Compressor. Because 
you know, each vocalist is going to be uniquely different, more so than every different instrumentalist. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Follow me on Instagram at Real Audio Haze. If you want lessons, I teach music production and guitar. You can email me at realaudiohaze at gmail.com. And that's all. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.